Let's kick over some of the big stories of the day with our good friend Katie Wolf, uh, Bre- morning announcer on Mix 104.9 in Darwin. Good to talk to you again, Katie, and congratulations. You got yourself a commercial radio award on the weekend. Best uh, best talk presenter. I think we've got a photo here of you uh, getting uh, the yes. trophy. There, you're armed up. <laughs> Fistful of trophies. Well done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Thank you very much for uh, for acknowledging that for me, Chris. I plenty wasn't to, expecting it. Plenty very to talk about. Um, plenty to talk about uh, <laughs> over morning radio in Darwin of late. Tell us about uh, the local reaction to mm. talk that B-52s, uh, half a dozen of them, obviously uh, likely to be nuclear armed. Of course, uh, there'll be a no say you know, don't ask, don't tell sort of policy in place. But uh, are Territorians mm. worried about that or accept that's pretty much part of what happens in, the, in a garrison town well, like Darwin? Well, that's the thing, Chris. It is certainly a garrison town. And, um, you know, we very often have different exercises taking place. It's not the first time that that type of aircraft will indeed be in the Northern Territory. I believe they were possibly even here for exercise pitch black not too long ago. Um, and that was really the message from the Defence Force here in the Territory earlier in the week, that uh, this isn't new from their perspective. I know that it probably um, sounds maybe a little bit frightening to people, but at the end of the day, we here in the Territory understand understand that we are very much uh, strategically important, that our location is strategically important, but also we understand the vulnerability that that brings with it. And I guess that um, nobody is more aware of that than Territorians that have lived here and have lived here for a long time, particularly if they were alive when Darwin was bombed back in 1942. And a little bit earlier this year, I actually interviewed a uh, one of the veterans um, who was here when, when Darwin was bombed. Uh, Brian Winspear was his name. He's 101 years old, Chris. And he'd told me at the time that really it was a massive surprise, not only to Darwin, but to Australia, that Darwin was bombed. And he'd actually said to me during that interview that, you know, we've got to make sure that we're prepared for anything. And although we may not like that, and although nobody wants to be in a situation where, you know, where those aircraft need to be used, we've also got to be sensible and you've got to be prepared. I'm all for it. Uh, I I want as much security for this nation as possible. What does worry me, though, is the bloke that controls the codes in the White House. Have a look at him speaking uh, just overnight. Mm -hmm. Well, if anybody think if we're doing it for the first time now in the 21st century, going into the 20th, from the 20th century going into the second quarter of the 21st century, that we'd say 12 years is enough? I think 12 years is enough in the, going into 20, 30, 40, 50? Katie, do you think he even knew what he was trying to say? I don't think he did. And, you know, Chris, it's sort of gone from being a bit funny to actually a bit of being a bit of a worry and also thinking, how's his health? And are people around him keeping a really close eye on his health? But it also sort of makes me question, is this, you know, like, is this the best that we've got on offer. Um, I I think that we can do a little bit better and I'm certainly not being ageist or anything like that, but we need to make sure that those that are in these positions of power um, know what's going on. I tell you what's funny about this one, if you go to the White House uh, website and look up where they put all the transcripts of what the president's had to say, they actually put this bit up on the transcript, the, the official transcript on the website. It says, and, and they didn't doctor it, as it was. And, folks, one of the reasons why we led the world for so long, we were the first nation in the world to provide universal education, grades 1 through 12. Well, if anybody think if we were doing it for the first time now in the 20th, 21st century, going into the 20s, from the 20th century, going into the second quarter of the 21st century, that would say, tw- oh, on, it, on oh, no. it goes. So there it is. You can read the words of wisdom oh. from now. Just one, one issue. We'll leave him alone for a moment. Got to get your thoughts on Grandparents' yeah. Day in New South Wales schools. They want to call oh. it Grand Friends' Days now. Chris, this riled my listeners up so badly today. I mean, what problem have people got with grandparents? They are amazing people. They help us to raise our children. Do you know, my kids aren't lucky enough sometimes when we have different events on at school to take their grandparents. But they don't say to me, Mum, we want that day changed to something else because we can only take you or we can only take Dad or only take an auntie or a friend. You know, we don't need to take things away from different groups of people to make others feeling 
included. In exactly. fact, I think if you want to feel included, you've actually got to take everybody along on that journey with you. And to go down this path of saying that we shouldn't have Grandparents Day, I I feel really sorry for all the grandparents that are out there watching that have read this because we actually really value what you do and we're really grateful for all that you do to help us raise our children. So don't Spot be on. demoralised by this very silly call. Spot on, Katie. Thanks so much for joining us.